Welcome to the Bay Area Sound audio commentary for season one of Sam and Max. This is Jared Emerson Johnson, the composer, and did some sound design and voice directing on the project. And Julian Kwasniewski, and I did some sound design and voice directing on the project. This lovely credit sequence, as probably was mentioned in some of the other commentaries, designed by Jake Rodkin, one of the illustrious Telltale employees. Features some wonderful camera moves. Yep. This is the longest name in show business. Jake actually had to do some special camera work to make the name fit on the screen and be legible. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but I know that when he first tried it, it wouldn't fit at all. But he made it work. So here we have the Quit moving around so much, the first return of Sam and Max case, after the Long hiatus. You're hearing the first, uh, first sort of Sam and Max theme that I came up with. It's sort of a bit of a throwback to the music from Hit the Road. I wanted the first thing we hear to be a little bit, a little bit in that familiar vein with the sort of loungy, walking bass and the snaps and the the organ in there, just kind of keeping it very chill. And then from there, moving out into some new territory and trying out new stuff yeah and the office is the you know it's your hub and um so similarly with sound you know we knew we had to uh define this area sonically and um you know the, all of these sounds carried through the the whole season of course and will undoubtedly carry into the next season um ah uh, yes emetics I didn't. I didn't know the root of emetics or, or what that meant until halfway through, and I forget exactly how I found out. But it, it is. It is sort of the art of vomiting or the study of vomiting. <laughs> Most sound designers are very good at emetics. Yeah, we're we're, <laughs> we're one of the masters. Have no fear, simple citizens. The freelance. So here we have uh, the introduction of Bosco, voiced by Joey Kamen. Fabulous voice actor who hails from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, he uh, he's a character in his own right, and um, it's funny when you when you get these guys in, they, they none of them he does not look like that. I assure you, <laughs> and uh, just like all radio personalities, no one ever looks like they sound. But um, yeah, this this the, those sessions were fun because the guy would get he gets really animated in there and um, you forget sometimes you know when you look in the booth and here's this guy but then when you look at the speakers and you're just listening it's just a completely other sound and Sam of course is, is David Nolan from uh, phone boom fame for telltale Video. enthusiasts out there. Yeah, David's an incredible uh, voice talent and a, a superior human being. And the guy, um, he just, he stepped right into this role. And, and you know, it was a, definitely a, um, a tricky thing coming from the LucasArts Sam and Max series and <clears throat> replacing um, Nick Jameson and Bill Farmer. And, um, you know, it was it was the time to do it if it was going to happen because it was a redefining of the series and uh, the license and um, and so these the Sam and the Max really they really embody the spirit of the characters, but they also um, they do kind of take it into a new direction and you know the the response was was um, really favorable, which was um, really comforting for us just because it was. Uh, a lot of, lot of auditions. Uh, the auditions went on for a long time. We, we even had to recast um, Max just because um, one of the actors no longer was able to, to do it, to continue. But what we ended up with was pretty incredible. It was, it, it was interesting. Coming into it, we knew, we knew it was going to be a challenge, and we knew that the audience was going to be scrutinizing it pretty uh, vehemently. And we... Um, so the, the casting process was was intense, and the and the refining of the voices was also very intense. I mean, we started working with David, especially uh, long before production on the first episode even began, just with trailers and stuff, and figuring out what the that is just the most harsh sound effect there. I was talking over it, but the, sorry, to interrupt, he's down, but, man. He is down. <laughs> that bowling ball on the head. It's one of my yeah, that's actually moments. the kind of sound that you always use as a um, when you're trying to figure out. 
what you call a sound and you you put it in the database and it's um it's like bowling ball hits head head crack bone <laughs> body slammed to concrete um but no on the voice definitely the uh and uh when we had andrew as max um this is going to hurt us a lot more you know he had a he had an energy um and everything was working great it was actually unfortunate that um he wasn't able to continue, but then when William came on board, um, it you know, really continued it, to grow it just, from there. Yeah, it, it really it changed in the way in the ways it had to change, um, and you know he actually took a little bit of um, post processing to really put him into the zone, um, and so we came up with a whole bunch of processes for um, the two characters and. Uh, what's a, what's still amazing to me is that you know the, Jared and I split the directing and. And obviously, both of those guys um, were not in. Well, maybe not obviously, but they were not. None of these characters are in the studio with each other at the same time. Yeah. So they they and they may not be directed by the same person. Um, episode to episode. As, uh, yeah, episode to episode, or and, even within know, a single episode. Scene. Yeah. And um, and it's really amazing how the um, how the the conversations work as if they were um, in the same room together. Awesome and driving just sequence. Our magic. Yes. This is a great sequence. The, the driving is always uh, it's always fun to have. It was the mini games. It was great to have a chance to do some some funky music for it too. I was I I really wanted to to push the genre and, and get the the sound of the music you know a little outside of just the loungy jazz that everyone would be expecting necessarily. And it seemed like these driving sequences were calling out for some kind of retro. Actually, funky, funky horn section stuff, and had a ball doing that, and, and that actually developed into the first soda, the soda popper song, which wasn't actually at all part of the original design document for this first episode. There was, you know, the sequence when Wizards singing the song to you. Um, I actually, you know, discovered that when I was directing the session. I didn't, I didn't realize that there was a song, or you know, that was meant to be the soda poppers theme song before, and it wasn't meant to ever be a part of the show and when I was directing that I was just thinking God if there's time I just I would love to to set that set these words to music and and have a really bad 70s TV show theme song and uh, it, it just came out so well and I think it's you know it's certainly one of my favorite things that I did for episode one and I know a lot yeah, of people great. really responded well to it and get a chance to do some crazy falsetto Bee Gees harmonies you find out a lot of things about um Especially in the beginning of this project, we would find out a lot of things by being in the voice sessions. And oh yeah, there's a whole song here. It's one of the one of the positive things about doing the voice and the and the music both. So you get you get a very good look at the overall scope of the game, which which isn't always clear to everybody working on the project from the beginning. You know, everyone has a good grasp on whatever particular part it is that they're going to be doing. The artists know what it's going to look like, and the Programmers know how it's going to be needing to be wired up, but the full over overarching story isn't necessarily clear from the beginning. And recording the voice definitely. The organ here is great. Got, I love that organ. This is uh, Brian Summer. Yeah. Wonderful voice actor. We, this was the only character we had him in for in this season, but he. Uh, I hope we can bring him in for something else season two because he. He's a wonderful talent, and he's, he's also, now he's also a police officer. He is also an, uh, he's a police officer and and voice actor. No. And if he ever pulls me over, I'm gonna have to play the card and shave his fro. <laughs> no, he he has no. Fro. He does not have a fro. Very nice cologne, though. Every session. How cool! Is it over? I think so. So. Oops. Since you've ruined the beautiful irony of having my arch rivals run my promotional... The Swirlitzer organ. I'm afraid <laughs> yeah. You know, his, uh, it's funny to hear him because he's, uh, he's got a lot of different voices, but this one here, he's kind of this geeky guy. And he, um, in real life, he stands about, what, 6'8"? The guy least, is a least, monster. He's a, he's a very tall man. Okay, here we go. Here we go, going Delia. into the dream sequence. Cue the whole tone scales. Uh oh. Either I just walked into the Salvador Dali Memorial Wax Museum or I'm dreaming. You love me. You adore, you me. adore me. You want to they name all your children after me. Video you were working too hard. Man. 
do my evil bidding and so forth. <laughs> Holy brains in a blender. I'm still hypnotized. If you know, some of these recording some of these lines where he, he says something like that, where he has this really run on sentence. Um, those are so Not fun easy. to do. <laughs> Not easy. Not easy, but um, David, when he nails it, it's just, the master. It's, he is the master of it. You gotta get me down from here. Okay, little guy. We have an oxygen tank on hand just in case, but so far we haven't needed to use it. Lagomorph culture would be a really good band name. What's this? A rerun? Didn't we just see the dog getting hypnotized episode? This music here was well, actually really one of my favorite tracks from episode one, and I think it's oft overlooked, but the uh, the attack the dog music, sort of uh, the beginning of the of the more almost weirdly big bandy sound that appears occasionally in the in the season. We see you, and this time we're going to get hypnotized again. <laughs> I'm sure you all remember the commands I taught you. So now I'm so glad the soda poppers weren't just restricted to this one episode. They're just the most harsh characters of all time. Totally. It was just so so funny to those were tough sessions to see them and see how they developed them in episode four and again in the uh, well in two and then in four, especially in four. I really thought they. I tried to say they got the dynamic between the brothers yeah, really, no, definitely well. It was just you me up, painful to watch them all together. There you go. There they are. Well, that's that, Max. Another boot to the pasty ass of crime. Thank goodness this whole hypnotic mind control thing didn't go any further. And this voice is none other than Brendan Ferguson, uncredited. He has a number of little voice cameos over the over this course of the season. He's an incredible talent. All right, well, that was episode one. Bye-bye. We'll see you on the commentary for episode two.